Hello everyone, um, my name is Nikos and uh, the purpose of uh, this video is to explain to you some um, analysis I've done on the uh, BMXI data coming from uh, Blonity. Um, I started investing in uh, the miners uh, around uh, December, not all of them, some of them, and around that uh, period I came across the videos of uh, Blonity, uh, which I found very interesting, uh, especially because they were backed out by data, um, and I was quite intrigued by it. Um, so a small disclaimer, first of all, from my side, that uh, there's plenty of assumptions in uh, the data analysis uh, that can be wrong, and most important of which is that uh, the data looks into the past, and by that we can uh, often assume that the same thing will happen in the future, and th this is often uh, far from true. And therefore, what follows should not be taken as financial advice, but nevertheless, personally, I am invested in some of the, these companies. Um, so the thing I've done here is um, uh, I tried to backtest um, uh, BMXI and uh, make some quick uh, sanity checks. So first of all, what I've done here in this table is I've taken some of the closing prices uh, coming from Yahoo Finance for uh, the six uh, uh, miners that we are often uh, talking about and Bitcoin for a number of dates uh, starting from the 4th of December up until 19th of December. Uh, then on this table, I aligned uh, BMXI of Blonity uh, for these exact dates uh, that I'm interested in. And uh, then in this table, what I've done is I've computed the daily return for each of uh, the miners for uh, every day. So the, the daily return is the relative uh, change uh, of the price from one day to the next. So if I want to interpret this 2% here, that means that um, the price from the previous day of Mara uh, to the next day, uh, it went up 2% and then went down um, 6%. So um, the first um, thing I wanted to do is I wanted to have some kind of uh, reference, uh, some kind of baseline uh, measure of uh, where would I stand and how can I measure my BMXI, whether it works or not. So um, I kind of here assume that I start with a capital of, uh, let's say, 10,000, hypothetically, and I made one portfolio uh, where, hypothetically, I put all my money into either of Mara, Riot, BTF, HUT, uh, Argo, or Hive. Uh, so all of it is here. And uh, by using uh, the daily returns I computed uh, here, I started compounding that 10,000 day by day by day and uh, start evolving it and see where it would uh, finish. So what I see here at the end, uh, where the computation stops, um, is that um, the largest, uh, the largest uh, return would be given to me if I would have invested in Argo. That would return 85,000. And the worst case scenario was Hive, uh, which would return to me 24,000. Uh, and the others are somewhere in between. So that means I have... Uh, one in a sixth uh, chance to get it right, uh, to be lucky to invest everything in Argo for that month, because another month could be different. And again, I, I would have one in a sixth chance to, uh, to get it wrong, uh, completely wrong, and put all my money into Hive and get uh, only, let's say, only within quotations, 24K. Uh, Okay, so this, uh, these two numbers uh, are useful for me because now I know uh, where uh, BMXI should lie, uh, the range where it should be, where I expect it to be. Uh, the second uh, kind of baseline for me was to say, okay, now what if instead of uh, all in one uh, stock, what, uh, what if I would spread out my 10,000 equally across all the miners, uh, that gives me 1,667, and then using the daily returns that I have here, uh, start compounding and uh, evolving it and see wh where my total PL would um, uh, lie. So if I do that, if I put equally here my capital uh, to all the miners and just let it run, I would arrive at some numbers here. And if I sum it up, I get about 45,000. And if I plot it, uh, here is a plot. I see that starting from day one up until day 29 uh, for that particular month, uh, because 
only for that month we have DMXI. Uh, so Argo would perform the best. Argo is the red one. Hive would perform the worst. And this scenario with the full diversification is somewhere in between as expected. So that's uh, that's uh, pretty much as I um, as I would have thought. Uh, but now it starts getting interesting because now I'm going to start uh, using BMXI. Um, so uh, so here I go to this portfolio here where I say, okay, um, what if what would happen now if I don't make this. Uh, choice this uh, gambling of putting all my money into one stock or diversifying fully but what would happen if i just use blindly bmxi and put all my money into the top bmxi stock every day so here i made a ranking of uh, the three the top three bmxi so these are the top three values coming off uh, bmxi for every one of these dates and um, <clears throat> And on this table, I have the name of the top miner corresponding to that value. And uh, then for each of these miners, I look up what was the return of that miner uh, for that particular date. But notice what is interesting here, what I'm doing is that uh, I have a two-day gap here between uh, the name of the miner and the return. And because of that, so here I'm, I'm assuming that here on that date, I observed uh, my uh, BMXI. Uh, so I found that minor number five was the best, which was one, two, three, four, five. It was Argo. And here then I made the swap. So here I, I observed the BMXI. Here I made the swap into my, my portfolio on that date. And on that date, I observe the market and the daily return. So that's why I have a gap of two days between the daily return and that sale. So now uh, BMXI has a predictive power because it looks ahead in the future. Um, so then I am compounding my initial uh, capital of 10,000 using the daily returns uh, of that day, but the, way, the, 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 the top BMXI stock of two days before I'm compounding and just let it evolve. And wh where I arrive is at the number of uh, 78,000. Uh, so 78,000, uh, if I look at this graph, uh, this is the blue line here. Uh, the blue line goes very, very near to where Argo finished, uh, which was my best case scenario. Uh, but the nice thing here is that I didn't have to make a choice in the beginning. I didn't have to gamble. I um, I simply followed uh, BMXI, uh, what it told me two days ago. Uh, so that's that's nice. But then uh, there is more to be tested, and this is what I've done here. So here, then I said, okay, what if I don't look just the top miner? What if I look the top two miners? I assign a certain weight uh, to the top two miners, weight one and weight two. Uh, and I observe the return. So the, the returns uh, look again two days before um, in each case. And the weight for that I assign to each of the miners uh, is proportional to the uh, ratio that it had uh, as a BMXI index. So if you see here, these numbers, uh, they sum up to 100%. Uh, all the time, but their pr uh, proportion, their relative proportion, is the, exactly the relative proportion that uh, they had uh, in the BMXI. So then I have two stocks in my portfolio, and I let them evolve again, and I compound my 10,000 initial capital, and I end up in 84. 84. So I have 84,000, uh, and this is this graph then. Uh, this is the brown line. Uh, it's, this is the portfolio, the evolution of the portfolio with uh, the, using the top two uh, BMXI stocks. So what I see here is that, first of all, it finished uh, slightly higher than the situation with one uh, stock. And my personal interpretation of that is, uh, so I would have expected uh, um, a bit less because I have diversified, um, but it didn't come out like that. And my interpretation is that uh, by using two stocks, 
And because of the fact that uh, there is a delay uh, in, uh, there is a lag in the valuation of uh, uh, the market uh, relative to the BMXI, so the market doesn't capture immediately the value of the miners. Uh, and by the time it captures the value, uh, I, I am able myself to capture the value coming from both stocks. Uh, so that's why I end up in a higher number. Uh, so that, that's, uh, that's great. Then the next question for me was, uh, but what would happen if I assign equal weight to the top two stocks? And here I assign 50% to each of them, 50% every time. So that's fixed. That's kind of my baseline scenario. So, uh, so, then the, so here the question basically is, does the weight have an impact? Um, so if I put in 50-50 on both stocks every time, I arrive at something like uh, 79,000, which is not very far from the 84. Um, but it already tells me that uh, BMXI has all, not only some predictive power, but it can also be used to assign, uh, is very near the optimal weights uh, uh, for the portfolio, because by using them, I arrive at a higher number. Now, this is all for December, because that's all the data we have, and December was uh, quite an exceptional month, probably, but uh, in any case, that's all we have right now. Um, so then the next thing after this, the 50-50, was to, I, I started asking myself, is there some kind of optimal weighting uh, between uh, uh, stock one and stock two in the portfolio? So what I've done here is I've run a small sensitivity analysis where I said, what if I change my, the weight of my first stock uh, by plus uh, 0.05 or by plus 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0.2, and so on. And okay, uh, and relatively, I decrease the weight of the other uh, stock, uh, and I run this thing again, and I observe where I will end up. So it turns out that if I that the optimal weighting here is at uh, if I increase my uh, the the weight of stock number one by thirty percent relative to where the BMXI tells me. Uh, that gives me uh, the highest PNL, uh, so 85k uh, relative to uh, 79k. That um, no, that's the 50-50k is relative to the 84k. So the difference is not very large. It's a very small difference, really. But uh, then again, why not? Um, but it also tells me again. It confirms that BMXI. All, all already uh, is very near the optimal weighting. Uh, so you can play this uh, further and you can say, okay, then what if I add a third stock? So I have weight one, weight two, weight three here, and uh, all of them add up to uh, one, so 100%. And I use again BMXI as uh, an indicator uh, to the weights. So here I am uh, weighting uh, BMXI uh, uh, number one more uh, uh, so I'm using the first stock to, to weight it more so I uh, do the same I compound and the question is where will I end up with three stocks I end up in 84 not a great difference and um, the graph looks a bit like that so I have R, uh, R go in blue, Hive, the worst performer in, in, in gray. Uh, this black is the all diversified scenario. And then I have uh, these three very interesting uh, lines. The, the, this uh, blue one is uh, the BMXI with one stock, the brown with two stocks, and the yellow with three stocks. Um, what I like about uh, the BMXI with three stocks is that here, in this uh, case, it has captured uh, some of the upside volatility that the blue one did not capture, because the blue one looked at only one stock, uh, and when we looked at three stocks, we captured it here. It, so we finished, all of them finished around the same point, but uh, the one with the three stocks, it captures a lot of value coming from all three stocks. So we don't know in advance, but that, uh, but uh, that's why we need to diversify, and indeed that uh, that captures the maximum value at any moment. So the next thing I looked at is what is the risk uh, in the in these portfolios so far. 
uh, risk here is measured as the standard uh, deviation of the PNL. So I measure how much does the PNL vary uh, from one day to the next, and I, then I compute the standard deviation of uh, uh, these uh, uh, PNLs. Um, so then that, that's how I measure risk. So what I see here in this bar plot is that uh, when I ha when I use one stock for my uh, BMXI portfolio, I have a risk of uh, 20%. So that means that uh, my p uh, changes uh, on average by 20%. Uh, when I use two stocks, it drops very much to 16%. And uh, when I use three stocks, it drops to 15%. So the case where I use all three stocks coming out from BMXI uh, has the lowest risk and also very much, uh, uh, pretty much the highest return. That's a, a completely win-win situation. Uh, the next thing I looked at is, is, is there a, a difference between uh, swapping, making the swap uh, one day uh, after I observe BMXI or two days or more? So in this kind of computation, what I look at is, uh, so here, what I'm looking at is uh, um, um, I'm looking at uh, two days uh, before, and uh, in this uh, in this portfolio, I'm looking at uh, five days before. So uh, this cell here is looking at uh, the weight assigned five days ago. Um, it turns out that if I plot the graph with one day lag, two days lag, and five day lag, the difference is not massive. So they all finish around the same uh, number. Uh, the maximum is the two-day lag, uh, but they all finish pretty much at the same uh, point. Um, what what I think will happen next is that uh, as these uh, stocks become more and more uh, liquid, especially if uh, some go to Nasdaq eventually, uh, is that um, mispricings will be harder to catch because uh, the market will be more efficient uh, to spot the mispricings. So then uh, you need to be faster in your time uh, in your swapping. So that means uh, one day lag should be uh, better in that situation. Um, and the last thing I've done uh, was to see what would happen if I would have a, a cash uh, po position, because we've seen that uh, very recently, we went very much into bleeding. Uh, deep red, and we all say, I wish I had more cash to invest in. So what would happen if I also have um, a, a cash position with me? So because of the lack of data, so I didn't want to overshoot here. I've done something really simple. I've put uh, a cash position, a weight on my cash position, and I've run the Excel solver uh, but uh, requiring that I maximize the PNL by varying the cash position every time. Uh, so of course it gave me back a number. Uh, I mean all these numbers, uh, which uh, of course they assume that uh, I would know exactly where is the dip and I would buy exactly the dip. Uh, in reality, that's not the case. But in any case, that's uh, that that these numbers can be used as an indication. The way I interpret them is that. Uh, the solver gave me back uh, this uh, cash weight, which arrives at the number, uh, the PNL of 110,000. So without cash uh, position, I would end up around 84. And with a cash position and buying it at the right moment, I would end up at 110. And what I would say here is that if I average these uh, numbers across all uh, uh, trading days, I would find something like 15%. Uh, so if I hold in something like 15, um, so if I start from here, it's 17. Uh, so if I hold a 15% uh, uh, cash position on average across all the trading days, uh, that would uh, maximize my uh, PNL at the end. So um, I hope you found this uh, video uh, useful. Um, and like you all, I'm looking forward to uh, what will happen next in uh, Bitcoin and the miners. Thank you very much. Bye bye.